Hey, how y'all doing today? If we've not met, my name's Eric. It's my pleasure to welcome you here today. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I agree with what Adam said a little bit earlier. God's presence is here. I believe he wants to do something special. I believe he brought you here for a reason. This is no accident that you find yourself in this place today. In fact, he led me to Ezekiel um, chapter 40, verse 4, and I want to pray this over you as a bit of a prophetic word for you today. Um, there comes this moment in Ezekiel's life where God's trying to get his attention. He gives him this vision of things that are to come in the future. And here's kind of how it opens up for him. And he says, and the son of man said to me, look with your eyes, look with your eyes and hear with your ears and set your heart all upon all, set your heart upon all that I will show you for you were brought here in order that I might show it to you. Then declare all that you see to the house of Israel. I've always prayed from the very beginning of Journey Church, Lord, give us eyes to see. Lord, give us ears to hear and give us the power to put your word into practice in our everyday lives. And I believe he's brought you here to declare something to you today. You're here on purpose. So I encourage you as we dive into God's word, Lord, may you remove all distractions. Lord, would you give us eyes to see you for who you really are? Lord, would you give us ears to hear, not just cursory, but it might go deep within us by the power of the Holy Spirit to transform as only you and your word can. Lord, would you give us the power when leaving this place to declare it to the lost and hurting world around us, that we can't contain what you've done in us on this day of destiny where you're trying to speak something to us. Lord, just as you drew Moses to that burning bush, as you drew Ezekiel to that moment, as you drew the shepherds in the field by that star to the place where Jesus was born, Lord, would you draw our hearts and our minds and our spirits and our bodies and everything that we are unto you. And would we live a life that declares your goodness in the midst of the chaos of today in Jesus' name? And everybody says... Amen. Like one person's excited. Come on, give God a little hand clap. Get a little bit excited out there. So Thanksgiving is behind us. Come on, Jesus. But we can always live a life of Thanksgiving. We're starting into the Christmas season. It's a time where often we get really busy. Has anybody already been really busy in the past couple of weeks, right? Get really busy. We can get distracted. We can at times forget what the real reason for the season is all about. We're preparing our hearts to open some gifts on Christmas morning or maybe give away some gifts. And what I want you to see today as we kick off this new series called Unwrap Gifts is that there's some gifts that God wants to place in our life that we need to exercise, that we need to declare, that we need to be deep within us, that they pour out of us because they represent who he is. Amen? See, God loves you and God cares for you and God desires that you would have the kinds of things that we're talking about during this series. Hope, love, joy, and peace. They're really an extension of our low-hanging fruit series, are they not? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, self-control. These are the things that should represent and be a declaration over your life, right? The things of the Spirit. Go ahead. I think we got the verse for it up here. Galatians 5.22 says, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now, Adam preached on self-control last week. Isn't that an awful message that you have to be in self-control as a believer in Jesus Christ? But these are the... Think think about this. I, I challenge you the last time I spoke. To use this verse as a bit of a litmus test. Maybe you can keep it up there on the screen for just a moment. Use this verse as a litmus test in your life. If this is what a believer is supposed to look like, right? If these are the characteristics of what it means to be a believer, where are they in your life? If we were to raise the love meter right now and put you in front of a mirror, where would your love be at this particular moment? 
Is your life characterized by joy? Anybody in here joy? Come on. Are you joyful today? A few of you? Okay, come on. God's going to move today. I have no, no, no doubt. Peace. Is peace really the defining characteristic of most believers that you meet today? Now remember, I see y'all's feeds on Facebook, right? <laughs> is it really? Is peace something that you would say defines your life? I'm asking you right now under the guise of the Holy Spirit. He brought you here on purpose for a reason. If this was a test for you today, not necessarily a pass-fail, but one where if there was an honest understanding that you were really falling short in some of these areas, because if you're really falling short in some of these areas, that means that Jesus is not resonating through you. See, I also made a comment in my message a couple weeks ago. Guess what? All of us are bearing fruit all the time. These are the fruits of the Spirit, right? But maybe you're bearing some other fruit that's not such juicy fruit. It's some nasty kind of fruit, right? That's the opposite of these things. We'll examine that for a moment in just a second as well. But patience, is that your virtue? If people looked at you, they would say, oh, you're just patient all the time. I wish I had your patience. Why are some of y'all laughing? <laughs> Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. How do you measure up? What areas need to be worked on? What areas do you need to grow in? What ones have you seemingly accepted in your life as unachievable? I'll never have self-control. I'll never have patience. Have you accepted some of those things? Well, if Jesus exhibited those characteristics and the spirit of the living God is inside of you, all things are possible to him who believes. We are to represent those things in your life. So if we're always bearing fruit and sometimes we're not bearing the right kind of fruit, it begs the question, what spirit is in control of your life if not the Holy Spirit? If those are the fruits of the Holy Spirit, there's also some other fruits like fruits of the flesh, right? So then when we're not operating in the Holy Spirit, we're operating at times in our flesh and we're demonstrating other fruit that's not on that particular list, right? There's also the possibility that demonic powers and principalities could be influencing you and setting against you and against the things of God in your life. And God wants to deliver us from those things, right? So it's important that we do analyze our lives in light of God's word periodically, in light of things like the fruits of the spirit and say, am I demonstrating these things? Because what good is it to be the best giver in this room if you don't demonstrate love? What good is it to speak in tongues more than anybody else and not demonstrate love? What good is it to go prophesy more than anybody else, but you're a mean, nasty, grumpy person all the time? I don't want to receive anything from you in Jesus' name, right? See, I've met some charismatic believers that are on fire for God, but they're the nastiest people at the same time. But God's saying, if the Spirit of God is evidence in your life, you can have both. You could be anointed. You could walk in power. You could walk in the anointing of God. And you could demonstrate these things as an affirmation of what spirit is really in control of your life. And if you've given up on some, let me tell you, God wants to use today as your day to be set free. As we compare and contrast and zero in on one of these for today, what are the opposite of some of these things, right? If the opposite of love is what? Probably evil, right? or hate. Don't we see that evidenced in society every single day? Joy, probably the opposite, is depression. How many believers in Jesus Christ in this very room are walking around in depression right now? I guarantee you there are some of you here who are in depression. Peace, what's the opposite of peace? Fear or anxiety, right? How many times as believers are we walking in fear? Guess what? If we believe half of what we sang this morning, y'all should be fired up for Jesus right now because I'm here to tell you, we sing songs of peace and freedom. How can we walk in fear if God is with us? If God is not only alongside of us, but inside of us, right? The opposite of patience is impatience. 
The opposite of kindness is meanness, goodness, evil, faithful, not loyal, gentle, angry, self-control, lack of self-control, right? What is winning in your life right now? God has a gift that he wants to give you today. He wants to free you from the things that are on the wrong side of that ledger. And he wants to position you to walk in the fruits of the Spirit. So I'm going to speak in spiritual authority right now over this room and say that in the name of Jesus, any spirit that is not the Holy Spirit, I bind you, I break you, I cast you out now in the name of Jesus. Hate, you have to go. Depression, you have to go. Fear needs to leave. Impatience, you're out. Meanness and evil spirits, you must go in the name of Jesus. Unfaithfulness is gone. Anger is gone. Lack of self-control is gone and replaced with a sound mind. Hallelujah, Lord. And the spirit of the Christmas season, I believe that there's one area of this list that God wants to deal with in our hearts today. That is peace versus anxiety and fear. You know, antidepressants, anti-anxiety medication are at an all-time high in our generation. I would ask you that if you suffer from anxiety, if you suffer from fear, with nobody looking around right now, maybe everybody close your eyes for a second. If you suffer from fear, if you suffer from anxiety, would you raise your hand up real high so I could see it? While nobody's looking around, I assure you that there are hands all over this room today. Well, Satan, I issue an eviction notice to you today that you are not going to keep God's people in fear. You are not going to keep God's people in anxiety. For 2 Timothy 1.7 declares, for God has not given us the spirit of fear. So if you are walking in the spirit of fear, some other spirit is controlling your life. It's not meant to be there. As a believer, it needs to go, right? You are possessed by God as a believer in Jesus Christ. He owns you. Stop giving in to that spirit of fear. Stop giving in to that spirit of anxiety. See, he declares and decrees something else over you today. He has not given you the spirit of fear, but of what? Power. power. Some of you don't want power. I don't know what's wrong with you today. He says, but of power and what? of love and of what a sound mind anything that causes fear is from a tormenting demon and it must be cast out it has no place in the lives of a believer in jesus christ see jesus entered the world at a time where things seemed upside down Yes, the Jewish people were in their own land, but they were under the rule of the brutal Roman Empire. The Roman Empire ruled by fear. It abounded and their brothers were being beaten, enslaved, and even crucified. They were foreigners in their own land. Yet like in the days of Exodus, there were many who were crying out for a savior. They were crying out for a redeemer. They were crying out for something to change and something did change that would change the course of history. It's why all of you are here today. Many years before, if you go back to the Old Testament and look at the book of Isaiah, he prophesies of a son who was to come. It says in Isaiah 9, 6, for a child will be born to us. A son will be given to us and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, and Prince of Peace. For those of you who are suffering with anxiety, for those of you who are suffering with fear, for those of you who are suffering with depression, the Prince of Peace is here today and he wants to take that from your life. He wants you to walk in peace and joy and happiness. Man, God is good. It says that he is the prince of peace. If he's the prince of peace, why do we accept that so many of us walk around in anxiety? If he's the prince of peace, why do so many walk around in fear? If he's the prince of peace, why do you let other things rule your life? And why do you invite other things into your life? 
You know, people get mad at Mary Jo and I for saying, you should not as a believer in Jesus Christ participate in Halloween. Why? Because what's the spirit behind Halloween, even if we dress as nice, funny little things, right? No, the spirit of fear, the demonic spirit, this demonic power and principality is behind that. You know, I turned on the radio driving in and Christian radio started an entire month of praying Christmas songs on the radio, right? I love it when you're driving and you hear those Christmas songs, songs about your savior. But you know, in October, just the opposite happens, doesn't it? Every single show you turn on is some kind of horror show. There's tormenting spirits and demons behind those things. Christians, why do we invite them into our life and then we wonder why we walk around in fear? Why do we invite and open doors for these things in our life? And we accept them and say, this is fine. This is how it's supposed to be as a believer. No, that other, that verse in Galatians that we read, those should be the defining characteristics of your life. We should accept nothing less. Don't invite these other spirits into your life because guess what? You give them a little bit of an open door and they will try to kick the door down. They will try to take over. You give them legal right to come into your life and your family and we wonder why our families are a wreck. We're wondering why anti-anxiety medication is at an all-time high in our generation. We wonder why as believers we have fear of finances, fear of our health, fear of our relationships, fear of what others might think of us. Fear of wars and rumors of wars. Heck, we even have the fear of missing out at times, do we not? But then we add to it at times by allowing witchcraft, horror movies, Halloween, and the like into our spirits and wonder why we are always so fearful. I have a theory that the ultimate fear for most of us is the fear of death. We sing these songs and we say that we believe Jesus Christ with our very soul that when we die, he's going to take us to heaven. And we're all excited about that. We have our heavenly fire insurance. Come on, Jesus, right? We're not afraid to die. I bet you right now if I ask, how many of you are willing to die for Jesus? Wait, all oh, you're being real quiet. <laughs> I expected the opposite reaction. Like you say, how many are willing to die for Jesus? Everybody's like, oh, fired up. Yeah, this is awesome. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. But then you go back to like COVID era, we were afraid to hang out with other believers. The church emptied out real quick, did it not? There was some wisdom maybe in the beginning. We didn't really understand it all the way. I understand all those points. But guess what? COVID alone scared away at least a third of the believers, if not half. Were they really fully believers in the first place if they haven't found themselves back in a place where they're worshiping God with all their heart, strength, soul, and mind? These last days will test and try our spirits so much so that even the very elect will be deceived if God doesn't shorten the days is what it says, right? We stand at a place where there is a war against the very souls of mankind. And I attest to you today that if you could overcome the fear of death by truly, fully believing that he is the Prince of Peace who came to take away all your sin, that he died in your place for your sin, that you might have life with him eternal, then what other fear could possibly hold you in anxiety or whatever? What weapon formed against you could prosper? If he's overcome hell, death, and the grave, he could overcome any obstacle in your life. Do you actually believe that? The psalmist put it this way. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom then should I be afraid? Listen to this amazing set of verses from the New Testament as well. Philippians 4.4, 4, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious for anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. In Matthew chapter 6, when you pray, when you give, when you fast, when you put the kingdom of God as your primary concern, you have no fear in your life. It says all these things, he goes through this whole list of fear and anxiety things, he'll say, they will be taken care of for you. What does fear add to even a day in your life? 
The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Lay your anxieties at his feet. Lay your fears at his feet. I believe if some of you will do that this very day, before we leave here, we're going to open up the altars one more time. I believe if you will be bold enough to come up here that God is going to deliver you, that God is going to set you free from those fears. He's going to set you free from that anxiety. He's going to close the doors on that chapter of your life that you could leave here happy, joyous, free, on fire for God. Would you hear what I'm saying? Would you see what God is doing? Would you put it into practice in your life? Would you cry out today? Don't accept those things in your life anymore. Would you cry out and ask God for help today? Don't accept those things in your life any longer. There's a set of verses that's often read at funerals. So I bring back to this fear of overcoming death. Psalms 23. It says this, may you put it deep within our heart, because this is really for those who live, not for those who are already with them. It says, the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want. He's your guide. He's there with you. It says he makes you to lie down in greed pastures. He leads you by still waters. You know, we sang a variant of this in those songs that we sang just a little bit earlier. It says he restores my soul. He leads me down the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because he is with us. His rod and his staff of correction at times guides us and directs us and ultimately comforts us. It says, you prepare prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. Do you believe that today, Journey Church? Where does that peace come from? It comes from being under the care of the good shepherd, knowing that he will protect, knowing that he will provide, knowing that he will comfort, knowing that he will care. Then what shall I fear? Fear go in Jesus' name. Fear go. Since we're approaching Christmas time, let me close or begin to close with some verses from Luke speaking about the birth of Jesus. It says in Luke 2, 8, in the same region, there were shepherds out in a field keeping watch of their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you today in this city is born a, a savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in swallowing, swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among those with whom he is pleased. Believers, he is pleased with you in Jesus' name. As we were worshiping today, angels were joining in that heavenly chorus. The demons were the ones who were trembling in fear. So I ask you a couple honest questions as we begin to wrap things up today. Is your life characterized by peace or is it characterized by fear? As we looked at that list of areas in our life where we bear the fruits of the Holy Spirit, at times is your flesh winning or are other spirits taking precedence over the Holy Spirit in your life? If so, then it's time to kick it out. If there's another spirit and you're tired of walking in hate, depression, fear, lack of self-control, or impatience, let's issue some eviction notices right now in the name of Jesus. It's time to be delivered. It's time to be set free. It's time to walk in the fruits of the spirit. It's time to get anything that is in your life that is not of the spirit out of your life in Jesus' name. You were not called to walk in fear. You were called to walk in peace. You were not called to walk in anxiety. You're called to walk in peace. Put up Galatians for one more minute if you can, AV team. And if you would, rise with me. The worship team's going to come back up. We're going to sing another song together. (laughs) 
But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control, as well as gentleness. If I were to ask you, maybe everybody just bow your heads and close your eyes for just one moment. If you suffer from any of these things, would you raise your hand up real high? Because I want to pray.